All right, so now let's start work on the socket. Uh, I've indicated this in as best as I really reasonably can. You know, it's it's a rough kind of finish, but it's within a thousandth there. And towards the back, kind of the same thing. So it's relatively straight. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, put a machine surface on it, which is something that we're going to need for reference later. So that's going to be the first step particularly up to here because we're going to end up cutting off the socket and putting on our own back end or welding on our own back end. So again, the point here is just to give us a nice machine surface, which is what we have. I also want to take off some of the uh, face there because it has that chamfer to help you get on the hex bolt. And that's kind of valuable space that we want to retain. pretty good nice little uh, drive right there okay so now let's go get a steel slug so that we can uh, cut this thing up and weld it all right so here's our steel slug we're gonna face off the end of it and then turn it down to <laughs> that's what's left of our impact socket but it's the vital part that we needed let's have at it Alright, this piece isn't terribly long, but still, this is the side that's going to end up going inside the, uh, the impact socket. And uh, we're going to turn this down. This is the part that's actually going to mate onto the uh, motor shaft. But because it's, it's hanging out just a bit and we have a good amount of material to remove, we're going to put a center drill in the end and run the, the live center. That should be adequate. By the way, this piece of stock, I know it's machinable because it's got a whole bunch of features machined into it and it actually came out of a x-ray machine control unit circa 19, I don't know, like 1938 or something. I used it for uh, a prop for a comedy commercial shoot and these are the pieces left over. <laughs> So because McClintock is like organic and stuff, the idea just came to me. I get that, but what does it do? It turns you organic. What does that mean? Just press the button. Now we're organic. We're cows. Yeah, organic cows. 
Guys, my udder's full. My genius is boundless. For a cow, milk me. Milk me! McClintock Distilling Company. Handcrafted. Organic. Inventive. And when you hold on to them, hey, you can do other things with them. All right, now we got a little bit of extra support happening. So let's turn this thing down. And again, you know, we want to be a little bit bigger on the OD than this, but not a whole lot because I don't want to have to turn a whole bunch of stuff off later. So I'd rather do it now. Should be coming dangerously close here, people. 8.81, and what were we getting on the 8.95? I'll take that. Just has to be close. Let's see if it's close enough. Ah, look at that. Perfect fit. Uh, it's plenty of chamfer for weld. All right, let's uh, part that off. I may or may not face it. I'm not going to part it off, actually. I'm going to cut it off on the bandsaw. I may or may not face it, and let's weld it up, and then we'll come back here. Okay, so we uh, cut it off on the bandsaw. I'm just going to face it real quick, just so that when we clamp it for welding, it's reasonably flat. It's within a few thou on the indicator. <laughs> For a second there, I thought my tool was a little high, but it's not. I'll break that corner just because I can. All right, let's weld it up. It's first tech. Incidentally, when I weld together dissimilar metals like this, I like to use stainless filler rod. I like to use stainless filler rod as much as I can anyway because it's much more tolerant of uh, impurities and such but it's kind of a necessity here. It's not quite as strong as mild steel, but it still does the job. All right, let's see if we can do this without burning myself.
Let's do it. All right, so as expected, it's not even close to straight out here, but it is indicated in here. In fact, this is good solid 20 thou out at that end, but it doesn't really matter. We're going to center drill a hole. We're going to turn down the weld and make it all pretty. Look at that wobble. Let's see, we were like 14 and a half on the socket. There you go. All right, I'm just going to polish that up with some emery just because it doesn't look so hot. I'm not doing it anymore. Don't care. All right, so uh, now we got to drill a hole through it and ream it to 8 millimeters. Let me get that all set up and uh, we'll go from there. We ultimately have to go to a seven and a half mil followed by a, a reamer, an eight millimeter reamer for the motor shaft, but we're going to drill a pilot hole with this guy. Yep. The joys of a name brand brand new drill. All right, let's see how this does. And we're through. Well, that was pretty easy too, actually. I tested this reamer earlier and it does in fact make an eight millimeter hole, which is good to know. Quote Michael Caine, easy peasy lemon squeezy. Man, after that impeller shaft, everything's going to be easy. All right, now I'm just going to chamfer it. Ladies and gentlemen, we're done. Now we move over to the mill to drill and tap the cross holes. Okay, I didn't show the drilling and tapping on camera of these two set screws because, let's be real here, how much drilling and tapping do you actually want to watch? So here is the finished sort of, let's call it an adapter, coupler, whatever, uh, with the two five millimeter set screws. Here's the flat of the shaft. It actually fits rather nicely. Um, it, it kind of self-limits about a couple of millimeters before it bottoms out. Let's tighten this up. So there you go. And then here is a six millimeter bolt. This is actually off that turbo, ironically. That's what I had kicking around. It's a little, you know, seen better days, but it works for the mock-up. That screws right into the back, and basically, that's all you do. That just goes right in, and it will just drive the impeller. And I know this seems kind of sketchy, like, really, like, this is going to work, 
Well, a couple of things. One, this thing is never going to instantaneously shoot to its max RPM. Uh, secondly, it's it, in fact, it's going to ramp up, and that's something that's programmed into the ESC. So it's going to take, whether it takes half a second, a second, two seconds, whatever. Uh, it was explained to me the reason why they do that is because if you have this motor, let's say, in a helicopter, and you suddenly whack it with full speed, you're just going to fold the helicopter rotors uh, right at the right at the pivot point. So uh, this is the plan. Uh, this thing, by the way, has a torque spec, uh, the 12.9 bolts I have coming, which this probably is a 12.92, but uh, the 12.9 bolts. Uh, I've got coming have a torque spec of 12 to 14 foot-pounds approximately and at 40,000 rpm and 20 horsepower it's two foot-pounds at 50,000 rpm and 20 horsepower is 2.6 pounds so we have like a factor of like six at least before uh, we even hit the torque spec of this bolt never mind actually breaking it uh, so again, this is really designed to be a mechanical fuse. Actually, I think if it's going to fail anywhere, it'll probably fail at the weld because that's one of the downsides of uh, stainless filler is it is, it is a little bit more brittle, but you know, Hey, let's, uh, so if, and, and by the way, if I had to remake this, I just simply wouldn't have made this all the same diameter. I probably would have gone a bit larger here. So the set screws, the set screws do protrude a little bit. Let's see if I can position them in a place where you can see. You know, they come out just a bit. Um, they still have plenty of engagement. Uh, the wall is four millimeters thick. Um, so hopefully this works. Um, and if not, we can always go deeper into the Vortec, but this is the least intrusive thing I could come up with to actually do this. And I will say, of course, now I can't get the screw out. I will say the threads actually came out rather nice in here. Um, they're, they're, they're beautifully machined and formed. Um, but of course that was a, that was a massive project. So hopefully this will work out. Um, again, I don't expect this to see any kind of massive shock loads of any sort. Uh, like you might see, say, if this was a belt driven Vortec, remember in, in the actual application, this has a side load. Uh, it, it sees all kinds of shock loads when you're on the gas, off the gas. This will never do that. That's one of the nice, nice things about this. Uh, and of course, when you have this on your car, it's turning all the time. Whereas this is going to be turning, you know, 1% of the time, maybe, uh, when you're driving around. So anyway, so that's, uh, that's the coupling in a nutshell. Uh, next thing we do is we modify the actual case. That should be relatively easy. And then just bolt it together. And then we do the uh, electronics and take it out for a spin. Stay tuned. Subscribe.